everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for all of you guys for being here today and for joining us for this fun little podcast that we're gonna do today. Um, I just wanna take a minute and thank you. It, it, we really, really appreciate each and every one of you coming here and showing up and contributing your questions, your ideas, your thoughts. It's a beautiful process where we learn from one another and it's just have been, so far, has been a really incredible experience, right Mark? You know it. <laughs> so uh, before we start anything, we just wanted to say a heartfelt gratitude from our hearts to yours for, for being here and not just part of this podcast today or the last few that we've done, but also part of the Boho Beautiful community in general. It's, it's been very special, so thank you. <laughs> Amazing. So today we entitled... Our honor with Prince. With Prince. We, we switched <laughs> it up a bit today. I yeah. wonder if you guys like the new setup. There's going to be a couple classes coming to you from this setup. So we're like, hey, why not just do a podcast here as well? So we thought today we could talk about mm-hmm. achieving the best mental and physical shape of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a, sort of a conglomeration of a lot of questions yeah. we always get. Definitely. I mean, we could probably just do a whole podcast on just the questions. But what's really cool is that we wanted to share some of our ideas, some of our tools that we've used so far in our life and that we keep using, but also hear from you guys. I mean, as you can see, there is a chat box here um, on YouTube. So if you have any kind of thoughts or questions that you want to throw at us, feel free to comment. Mark is going to be monitoring it a bit. As here, best so as I can. The best as you can. <laughs> so um, It's hard to do the conversation and then also and monitor, monitor the it. questions. Yeah. So I think at times we'll do a little bit of talking in a very <clears throat> loose structured way that we have there. Mm-hmm. And um, at times we'll turn it over to questions. Yeah. It's amazing though, I'm seeing people from a lot of Canadians here today. Toronto okay. and Kamloops and um, Florida. Well, that's not Canada, but all over the world. That's what's so special about this. You know, we're small on these things, yeah. but we're mighty. <laughs> and, and that's what's really cool because, you know, it's a small intimate group of right now a few five, 517 people Mm -hmm. and um, but what's really cool is the discussion we have and the comments you give live on and then thousands watch it and listen which is really really awesome and today's is a very um, I think fitting topic not just because I think people are slowly starting to get back into the groove of summer and really looking to you know bring up the best selves right and physically mentally spiritually and For us, you know, I think one of the most important aspects that we wanted to talk about to start this conversation is the idea that it's not about setting a specific goal and just attaining it and that will be that. Um, Reaching your ultimate best self is about the journey and it'll always be a journey because once you get to that particular marker point that you've set out for yourself, then you set the next one and then you set the next one. It's a constant evolution and that is the best way that we can move forward in life and always grow and always evolve. Yeah, well, seeking growth. And I think what's interesting about setting those goals and when you set out on the journey of you want to be better, whether it's mentally or physically or whatever it is, I mean, that's really the essence of Boho Beautiful. It was sort of the ongoing chronological uh, capture of our quest to be better. Mm-hmm. And it started with yoga. wanting to be more creative yeah. and involving yoga in our life on a day-to-day basis. But then also including different components like fitness. As you guys will see, you go on the Boho Beautiful channel, we have things like little fitness videos and you have your yoga and you have meditation and you have food and cooking and mindfulness. And you also have conversation. And like this. diving deeper into a contemplation of your own self, of your own place in the world, your purpose, all of these things, because they all kind of contribute into this beautiful snowball effect of our overall mental, physical, and spiritual health. We always, we always say that it's like to, to become, the, to seek the growth you're looking for. Um, so, and actually, it's two things. One time, so at one point, it might start with just setting a goal like, oh, I want to lose some weight. Mm-hmm. And, or I just want to be in better shape, just a general idea. But what's really, really cool, I think, about that is as you set out on that journey, I mean, if you hit that goal and then you're there and that's all you do, it falls apart right away. 
But when you realize the appreciation of the journey to that first goalpost, whatever that first marker point is, and I think that's what happened for myself. And I think in a way for us with this channel is that you realize that all the different pillars of health and mental well-being, they all work together and compound to a greater sense of, of, of shape. And shape not in the physical sense, but shape in, in the complete sort of composition of who you are. Yeah. Um, and so as you go down the path of trying to hit that first goal, you realize that working out may have been about setting some very short term goal, like I want to fit into these jeans or I want to lose some weight or I'm getting married or whatever it might be. And then it, it unlocks this new idea that it's actually about how you feel. Yeah. And that's the greatest thing, right? It's always about finding this feeling within yourself where you feel like you're living your best ultimate self right like hi Princey. he's a grumpy little man he's right grumpy now. today um <laughs> because if you think about it like you know as you start to go on this path of attaining a better physical shape your overall life starts to improve it's not just that you're seeing physical results and you're like oh i, I feel like i look really good i'm losing weight that's that's a bonus for sure but i think what's more beautiful thing is that you know, maybe you have more energy, you start to have more energy playing with your kids or going for a hike with your family members, like all of these little things, you're like, wow, I feel like I have more stamina, I feel like I have a little bit more life in me. And all of that starts from what you do on a daily basis and the routines that you create for yourself on the mat, maybe at the gym, maybe at the park, you know, all of these little things that well, contribute to it. And it's kind of like, a, it's like each one of us is so unique in what affects us in what ways that each of us needs to experiment to find the best recipe. Yeah. And it's an ongoing recipe to find that best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you find what you think it is, you realize that, oh, you, there's always room to keep growing. That's the beautiful thing about this kind of journey is it grows and it grows and it grows. And every time you're like, you add something new into what you're doing in life, yeah. you realize you can add even more. And that's why we wanted to break a lot of this conversation up into, into pillars. Yeah, or like tools, because Mark and I find, we found specific tools that have really worked for us and we're really happy to share that with you guys today. But it's not to say these are the only tools because it works for us, but maybe you have something that works for you. And through life, our, our challenge is to find those tools that connect with who we are and our lifestyle and what allows us to thrive. Um, and so that's why it's wonderful to be able to also read some of your guys' comments or contributions because, you know, it's mm -hmm. a constant learning curve. Like we're not sitting here like we're like these experts of fitness and well-being and this as if we've reached this ultimate God, goal. No. Like we're constantly learning as well. And we're and we're also failing and getting back up and getting better. And so it's just it's a wonderful collective community conversation that we can have and we can just bring ourselves and share what has worked for us with hopes that maybe it'll inspire or spark some ideas or motivation for some of you guys that are in need of it possibly right now. Well, I think the key word you said there, and I think this is really important for everyone watching and listening, is failing. Mm -hmm. Because this journey and setting goals, we kind of made it sound like it's some kind of superhero quest a minute ago, like, oh, you set a goal and then another goal and then another goal. But the thing about every goal is it comes with m like mass amounts of failure. Yeah. Meaning like- I love this quote. There's this quote once I heard it's called, you have to fail your way to success. Of course. That's, fail your way to success. It's, yeah. and, and meaning that you don't even know what that success pinnacle is. It's just that journey of getting back up is the success. Mm -hmm. So if you set out the goal to, you know, you want to do yoga every day and you do seven days or you do 10 days and you're like, wow, this is really working. And then something happens in your life as it always does for all of us. And you fall off the yoga train. Yeah. And then it's like then the, you, the success well, though, yeah. the success is getting back two days later, realizing that, and then coming back to that feeling yeah. of the momentum of doing yoga every day sort of cut you off. No, I was just going to say that it's also important not to beat ourselves up when that happens exactly. because some people really get to be really hard on themselves and they're like, oh, like I'm a failure. I, I skipped four days of yoga or I haven't worked out in a week and they kind of get really down on themselves. I think what's important is you have to find the awareness and you have to realize, okay, something's been going on in my life. I am not being able to stick to a, some sort of routine that allows myself to put my health and well-being first. So what do I have to do? So just that one little realization, that spark of awareness will allow you to get back up on that train. 
you know, and maybe it's just doing a little bit at a time. If maybe there's something going on in your life and you can't commit to an hour or an hour and a half every day, but it's simply making that choice every day to put yourself first, even if it's for 10 or 20 minutes. And the, and the worst you know? part actually is even the failure when it's out of your control, when you mm. get injured. Yeah. Or, you know, or something happens in your life that just like eliminates the space that you had for whatever routine you're mm -hmm. really investing your all into. Mm -hmm. But it's all like, and that's why it's also about being nimble in mm -hmm. those, not in the injury situation, but when you lose the space of your mornings because now your job shift changes and you have to get up three hours earlier, it's figuring out how to prioritize yourself. But and also in the injury space too, if there is an injury you're recovering from. Oh, it's terrible. It's there's always something you can do and maybe you can't even do anything physical for a moment but you know what you can do you can exercise your mind you can exercise your well-being you can sit and breathe you can meditate you can you can do something that still kind of works the energy within you and maybe that's not a physical thing but there's still something you can do and i think that's really important because a lot of people deal with a lot of mental stress and anxiety and depression when maybe something has happened and they're unable to work the same way physically as they're used to so having that time while your body heals and recovers and putting your energy into something else is really really important to kind of keep the mind healthy and the sanity <laughs> right you know sane so once your body's ready to slowly make its transition to take the baby steps back to the physical health that you are at your mind is strong enough to push you through it so and it's hard it's hard you mean you know it oh mark has uh you've gone through your I blew, series of... i mean blowing out my acl brought me to yoga yeah and then later blowing out my back and the herniation in my my lower back was actually one of the hardest L4 things S5, to ever right that's what it was l5 s I don't no, know. No, L4. <laughs> I can't even remember. It's been a while. I can't remember which vertebrae on his back very slipped, low one. but yeah, that was hard. Well, that was and that hard. and and it taught me a lot about just patience. And I somebody was mentioning beating themselves up and not beating myself up and realizing that one day it may be far away, but I'll get to beyond where I was and being extremely kind and careful with my body and recognizing that injuries happen. And, and you just have to do your best to, to manage your own expectation yeah. and to also set baby goals, like baby steps. And I think that's really key. Um, I wanted to say that, so we have the pillars, you know, our little blueprint. We talked about having our blueprint. Mm -hmm. um, so it, for us, it's yoga, it's fitness, um, it's routine and experimentation. So like what time you get up and the things you implement into your life on a daily basis. It's our supplements, our diet, and meditation in nature. And those are kind of our tools. Those are like our wheel. And they've grown and they've shrunk and they've grown at different times in our life. And it's really important to know like that's a lot. But those are the pieces that we're always experimenting with. Yeah. And that's that I think experimentation is a very key component to this. I'm just trying to read a couple comments yeah. as they're coming through because I'll read some mm -hmm. out. You want me to read some out? Sure. Yeah. Um I mean, there's... I saw a comment from someone talking about getting back to yoga. I, I kind of briefly saw it. I didn't read the whole message, but about after having a child or having a baby. And I think that's a huge struggle for a lot of women out there because I myself have never had a baby yet. So I don't know how that feels, but well, I get a lot of emails about but it. But I've had a lot of emails and I've heard <laughs> a lot of stories about women, you know, going through different um, experiences after they've given birth where they have to kind of get their body back to the strength they have. Well, you watched that Kaylee It Signs video the other day, yeah, right? Yeah, that was really interesting. One of the, like, she's a very famous big fitness girl called Kayla It Signs. I'm sure many people know her, but she gave birth and she talked about how she was at the lowest point of her life because everything she's gained, everything she was as a fitness trainer was completely lost and it was like really starting from the ground up. And again, this is where I think it's important um, to practice yoga and mindfulness because your mind is what's going to help you make those first steps because I can't even imagine what it would be, feel like to be somewhere like here. I mean, I can. I've been injured before, so I have an idea of how it feels to start from the beginning, but not after going through what women go through giving birth. Um, and what's important, I think it's just being kind to yourself and understanding that your body is so smart and your body will get strong and it will adjust. You just have to be patient. And the, the building your patience is one of the most key components when you're moving through recovery or healing or healing from birth is that 
you know, if you do it every day, little by little, and just do the very basic movement, your muscles slowly start to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And that comes, mm -hmm. it's for mm -hmm. any time that you're at the bottom in the basement and you're starting, you feel like you're starting yeah. from scratch, that's the hardest time to ever start again. But it's also the best time to start again because there's only room to go up. Yeah. Um, I mean, Samantha Baumgartner just said, help me, I'm so burnt out. And that's similar to starting from scratch. I mean, we've been burnt out. We burnt out after, like we, we've times. taken a little break re in the last month actually from where we were because yeah. we really felt the burnout coming from well, actually, all of the COVID when videos we, we were the doing. COVIDs and we were, COVIDs, <laughs> when the COVID era happened and we were doing daily videos, it definitely took a oh, huge toll on us and shooting so much too. Like I you know, felt like, oh my God, there is a burnout coming our way. Like we're gonna lose ourselves. So I think when, you're feeling that struggle and you're feeling that frustration where you're just like you feel like i'm burnt out i can't do this anymore one is important to listen to your body if you are feeling burnt out and maybe it's your body's way of saying you actually need to rest take a week off like there's nothing wrong with giving your body an opportunity to rejuvenate itself and again it doesn't mean you have to be like lying on the couch and just eating chips and junk food all day you can do things that still keep your spirits high. Feed your soul. Yeah, thank you. That's a beautiful way. Feed your soul. You know, take time and just read a book that inspires you or go into nature. Nature. Or Meditate. Just mm -hmm. simple things. Take, and you know, and if you have a stressful life, like see what you can do and the tiny little changes you can do even in that week. And maybe that's taking a couple of days off work or telling your company or whoever you work with that you just need some time off. Do whatever you got to do to put yourself first and rest and, take. and really really rest because then i know from us having to take we've taken maybe a week or two off remember it was like in january <laughs> yeah, <probably. laughs> we felt really burnt out I'm like we just gotta take a rest and i remember going to whistler and even putting our phones away not going on social media not checking anything and spending a lot of time in nature and i remember by the end of the week we're like oh like okay, there's like this creative inspiration starting to come that I want to go back to it again. And I think that's something that can show, or maybe that's not a creative inspiration to create things or content, but maybe for you, it's just getting back up on the mat again and doing yoga or working out. Experimenting, mm -hmm. baby steps, figuring out yeah. what it is that'll feed your soul yeah. in your time of need, whether it's physically or mentally. If it's burnout, it's mental. If it's physical, it could be your injury. Yeah. Um, just a couple people asked about the back issue and I have a deep empathy for anyone with back yeah. issues. I've also experienced pretty bad um, back injury myself so I can relate as well. Not to a point like Mark did but well, I was an athlete before I actually got into yoga because I was an athlete needing to recover and heal my spine <laughs> from an injury. So Cassandra yeah. Starks asked if I had surgery and says mm -hmm. I too have a herniated disc and I'm thinking about surgery. Um, I had a really great uh, physiotherapist and pain specialist in Toronto. Right? In Toronto, mm -hmm. um, and if you're in Toronto, I can hook you up with some contacts. But um, they, the biggest goal was to avoid surgery, and it got so bad, and it was like a level three or whatever because it was impacting my life. I couldn't. Actually I just like function. would like to add. I mean, I was taking care of Mark at that time when he was going through this. It was so bad that we would have dinner on the floor. Well, I never left Mark the floor. Mark couldn't get up. Like he would go pee and would be screaming in pain because even standing up would be so painful. Like I've never was seen anybody be in such pain. And he was on like pharmaceutical painkillers because it was the be only thing that could at least give him some sort of relief. It was beyond anything that I yeah. could, even the high, one of the highest levels of painkillers I was on was doing very, very little. Yeah. Um, but we avoided surgery through, like I used a lot of mental techniques, a lot of like visualization, a lot of back strengthening and stretching exercises because the sciatica was so bad. Um, but eventually I had to get a steroid epidural to, and that was like two days before I was locked in for surgery. It was a last ditch effort. And so Sandra, if you can get a steroid epidural, that was the one Try. thing that helped. It was yeah. after months and months and months within a few, like, I think it was within a couple of 48 hours of I getting the was, epidural. Yeah. The, the, and what it did, it, I think is what they, it took the inflammation off of, um, cause what happens when you disc herniates, right? It's like that jelly material that kind of comes out of the joint. And that's what was pressing in Mark's sciatic nerve. 
Um, so what they did was they actually were able to take away the inflammation slightly with the steroid epidural, mm -hmm. which helped relieve his insane sciatic pain. So yeah, and Mauritius leaf yeah. eaters dealing with a displaced L5 vertebrae and pinches her L2 really hard. Um, I'm having to learn to take small steps. I mean, that's exactly it. And that was the hardest thing for me, especially after the pain started to subside, figuring out how to take those small yeah. steps to not only get back on my feet and then back in shape mentally and physically, but also to um, get off the drugs, and, which was terrible. Yeah. And I We do have a couple videos on YouTube, actually. If, if anybody out there is suffering from back pain, um, there's one that we did in Hawaii. It was actually, it's in the title called Full Sciatic Nerve and a couple other ones that um, will have back pain title next to the video. And I would recommend you guys try it because a lot of the exercises that were put into that video was something that Mark was actually using um, during his physiotherapy. It's very yoga based, like little baby cobras and very gentle things, but um, highly recommend you guys, if you can, if you're at the point that you can start including exercises or if you have friends or families that are, are suffering from any sort of back injuries like that, mm -hmm. just give it a shot because I think that's really helpful and it'll get the muscles just gently working and it's a really nice baby step way to start bringing a little bit of movement and exercise to the back without um, putting too much strain and, and injury on it. So try it out. Okay. So I think, um, I think, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of comments coming through. You guys are awesome. <laughs> and I love how you guys always say where you're from because it's so cool to mm -hmm. see that we're all here from... I know, liter having like a conversation with people all over the world, it's really it's, awesome. It's really cool. Um, I so, guess one of the things I would like to say kind of to go back to what we are saying about our tools and our pillars and, and this kind of touches on the idea of like we were talking about burnouts and resting. It's all about balance, right? So everything that Mark and I do in our life, it's not just about... I'm going to go on the mat and do yoga every single day and that's all I'm going to do. It's always about finding a beautiful balance yeah. for you personally that involves a little bit of everything to make sure you're always challenging the body and working the body in many different ways. Yeah, and, and, and again, starting with one and adding on as you go and seeing how that affects the overall well-being. Yeah. So if you know you start with yoga, and we could start talking about what we do with yoga, mm -hmm. but um, as you dive into your yoga practice, realizing we get a lot of questions, uh, Juliana, do you look the way you do and feel the way you feel just because you only do yoga? And the answer is no. There's many pillars. Yeah. Right. There's different things, many different things that I do. Obviously, yoga is a huge component huge. of my life. And it's probably the primary thing I do that's like every single day because I like to position my practice um, in different ways that challenge my body. So a lot of the times my yoga practice has personally become almost like yoga workouts that you guys might see on our channel where it's yoga, but it's fused with a couple of different toning exercises or different movements that always challenge my body and my muscles in a different way. But at the same time, like lately, I try to really flavor up my my workout. So there are days where I actually do like cardio. I'll, I love going for runs. So I try to do, I mean, we walk this guy every day, twice a day. So that's great, but it's more leisure walking. But I actually go mm -hmm. for a cardio run or, you know, taking even like bar classes. Those are great. Like just with some weights, I've been trying out some of that. Just kind of always keeping it fresh and doing new things. Because yeah. I think it's always important to work your body in a different way because it will help, let's say, what you love most. So for me, I, yoga is the thing that speaks closely to my heart, but I know that I have to you know, bring up my stamina, for example, so I'm not always winded. So adding cardio maybe a couple times a week. I usually try to do cardio three times a week, and mostly it's been running, um, but I love it, and I try to do that. Well, if you think about Pilates. it, we're, ta we're, we're <laughs> talking about component. like the, be mm -hmm. the best mental and physical state, and that's yeah. because there's a union there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very fitting, I think, because yoga is that union of body and mind. And that's what we lean on as our number one mm -hmm. piece of the pie. And that connects the body and mind. And then we do multiple things on the one side for our mind. And then we do multiple things to accentuate our, our physical well-being yeah. and, and the, optimizing our strength and mm -hmm. our vitality. Mm -hmm. And so yoga being that number one piece, that's why I think 
we're such advocates of yoga is because we've found is if you have a strong yoga practice, it opens up space in your just general day-to-day -day consciousness to start adding other things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then when those other things fall apart, you can always come back to yoga to build that foundation up again. Yeah. And because when you get off the mat, you don't just feel like you spend a half an hour or an hour or 10 or 15 minutes exercising. You also feel just the space and clarity that's necessary to consider and take the, that moment on checking in. How do I feel? And then when you start adding other things, like even if it's just eating healthier or supplements, you start realizing that the same procedure you go through when you're on the mat of checking in, you start checking in with yourself after you eat. Yeah. How do I feel? It's, the, it's that sense of awareness, right? I think that's what yoga really helps you develop is a sense of awareness of your body, of your breath, of your mind as you practice. And then you take that strength, that sense of awareness, and you apply it to different aspects of your life. So, you know, another tool that has been working really great for myself and Mark is obviously the diet. You know, we, a diet is so important because if you have a shitty diet and you're working out every day, well, you're not going to be seeing the, the results and the progress that you hope to see if you were to eat super clean and follow a very healthy diet with the exercise that you're doing. So, you know, eating plant-based has definitely been one of the key components in helping us maintain a beautiful diet without the diet component, if that makes sense, right? People think diet, they think restriction, they think calorie restrictions, you know, only eat certain foods. But um, when you eat plant-based, for us, at least it's work that we never really have to think about it. It's more just about, well, how is this going to affect my body? You know, you, you think before you eat, so. And lighter, cleaner foods have done everything for us yeah. for feeling lighter and cleaner. Yeah. Like the expression of you are what you eat literally, not literally, but it translates quite well into um, you feel what you eat. Yeah. You like you really, really do. Like if you eat garbage, most of the time you don't connect it. But you feel it also more like garbage. Your state of mind too. I find that, you know, a few times that we haven't been able to stick to a very clean eating diet. It's a lot of the times has been when we're traveling. I mean, not anymore. We're not traveling at the moment. But, you know, there's been situations where you're on the road and there's really like no food for you. So you have to just make do with what's around. And I remember the feeling of eating something that you know, I wasn't really used to or wasn't necessarily super clean, but I ate it because I was just starving and just kind of feeling how that affected my state of psyche and my being, like feeling a little bit more agitated and irritated and just like, yeah, it was really strange. It, it takes you off your like balance that you create when you follow this regiment or routine within yourself that you create. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. so speaking of food, I mean, we clearly eat plant-based. Um, we have our detoxify program, which is sharing a lot of yeah. um, how we eat when we're eating plant-based and extremely clean and combining it with yoga. So that's a really nice balance. Um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, um, what's your eating schedule like? Like, why don't you share that? Eating schedule? I don't know, because I, I, I've seen a few questions already about what do you think about eating after certain times and what do you guys eat? And, did it, and that's, I mean, when you say you're vegan or plant-based, mm. that's the first thing everyone asks. Yeah. Um, not, I mean, and I'm bypassing the whole like entry level, where do you get your protein questions, right. but like what, you know, what do you eat on a day-to-day -day basis and when? Um, well, we, both of us, we eat very similarly because, well, we cook for each other, but we like to start our days always with a smoothie. Uh, smoothies, we have a Vitamix and we highly recommend you guys invest in one if you don't have one. It's uh, these professional blenders and they're like $500, but honest to God, we bought ours like three years ago and... It's incredible because it allows you just to make the most amazing meals and smoothies. And so we always use our Vitamix. We make our smoothie in the morning. We like freezing bananas because it allows for a nice consistency and allows you to feel like you're having almost like a treat in the morning because it gives you that sweetness and the ice oh cream God. kind We're of We're not doing a recipe. Really. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying that's just always the best like com the ingredient that we include. It's like frozen bananas and then we always... Ver, ver, like create a variety of different things but always like superfoods involved in our smoothies hemp hearts chia seeds i love throwing in all a scoop of almond butter all the time so we just combine our breakfast or our first meal 
with the very nutrient dense ingredients yeah. in a smoothie format so then we take it all in and it kind of gets your day going and also it fills you up so you're less likely to be wanting to snack on more food well someone was asking about binge eating um where was binge that eating. Uh, Violetta Karajova. Well, Karajanova. Have you ever had binge eating problems? And 100%. I mean, we're all addicted to, like, our basal ganglia and our brain are addicted to so many different loops of, of different types of binge eating. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're always in battle with yourself when your impulse, your human impulse to go after that salty thing or that sweet thing or whatever it might be, um, attacks. And sometimes you give in and sometimes you end up doing it and then but it's about the consciousness after and not allowing it to reinforce the yeah. habit and also um, just not putting it in your arms reach you know not buying certain junk food that you know you'll have difficulty stopping and or if you have one you like you know those like chips sometimes people have one and you just like can't stop because it's like super addictive so just making that conscious awareness to not even buy it in the first place so when you're in the grocery store making sure that everything you put in your home is healthy and clean and that you won't even see it and not think about it. That, that was the key to changing Our any habits. kinds of binge eating problems we have is if it's in the house, you're going to eat it. So mm -hmm. when you're at the grocery store and you know, you're a little hungry and you see the things that you don't want to eat, but you love to eat. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say don't want to eat, meaning if you are trying to eat cleaner, you, you have to literally not buy them because if it comes in the house, like it's through the door, it's already, the enemy is in the, it's in the space and it will get you. And that's the fact of it all. And another little tip for you guys that we always like to follow is don't go to a grocery store hungry. Cause I find that like, because of your hunger, you'll end up over buying things and then just stocking your house with more than you need. So even if you just have a banana or any mm -hmm. sort of like snack right before you enter, it'll help you keep things under control. Because we're talking yeah. about food, I'll just run through a couple questions here. Uh, yes in London asked for videos on meals and smoothies, which would be awesome. We actually, have a couple smoothies on our channel. No, we do. Yeah. But if you go to our website, you can actually sign up for a form there and there's a, a smoothie yeah. juice book that you'll get for free and it's got like a dozen or so recipes and... Juices and smoothies and different recipes and they're super healthy and some of our favorites. And it's and free. It's, just it's free, all yeah. you have to do is sign up for the newsletter and then if you don't want to get the newsletter, you can just unsign and it doesn't... Unsubscribe later, unsubscribe, but you can yeah. get the books. Yeah. Um, Helle Windelov said, you once mentioned some coconut cream or powder you put into your coffee instead of milk. What was that? I mean, that's a really great question. We get the layered superfood creamer slash coffee. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually, I think Joe Rogan turned us on to it because <laughs> he's always giving all his guests layered like they, superfood. They've like put a bunch of algae in it too. Mm -hmm, yeah. It's pretty healthy for it's pretty healthy. regards to like a coffee substitute. I've actually really enjoyed putting um, MCT powder. You can buy MCT oil, but in a powder format and it's white and it acts like a coffee creamer, but you're, you know, it, it definitely has a lot of high fat value, uh, volume, but it's out of coconuts, right? So that's why the, the fat is high, but it's really healthy for your brain. Um, so just even like I used to put like a teaspoon of it into and my it, coffee in the morning. And it's a great it's thermogenic, great. so yeah. it, it kicks your metabolism in, um, in, a, in a higher capacity yeah, way. So you can buy that in any health food store these days, MCT powder. I make mm -hmm. a crazy superfood coffee every morning because I fast in the mornings. Juliana eats in the mornings, but mm -hmm. I usually spend 16 hours fasting every day. I've found as I've gotten older, my metabolism has slowed down and it's really helped me just sort of manage not just my food intake, but just like my, my general vitality because when I eat, it slows me down. And in that fasting window, I find that my brain and my body and my mind and everything just works at a higher capacity. And then when I start eating, I usually hit a really hard, uh, like superfood smoothie. We can get into that in supplements, but I can't believe how much crap I put in there. Mm -hmm. um, but my coffee I have before I break my fast, um, she likes the MCT powder. I use the oil because it has, I don't what's that oil sweetener either. in the powder? Well, the, in the powder, they add some stevia. Stevia. Into it. And oh, no, just, sorry, not stevia, monk fruit. Monk, monk fruit. fruit. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't like that. And I don't know I, any I kind of... I can't taste it for some reason, but you yeah. can. I so know. I use the actual oil and then I also use the layered superfood creamer slash coffee. 
And then I'll usually put a little teaspoon of a different um, superfood mushroom, whether it's lion's mane, and I think I have a turkey tail in there. Chaga, too. And I have a mm -hmm. chaga. Mm -hmm. And I'll sort of switch those around. And, and oh, and then we use oat milk. The oat, oat milk, milk we yeah. use, I don't know what, it's like Barista brand. It's called the New Earth, I think, or It's something. so good. We sh this is Barista the key, brand. the secret, and I taught my dad this, is it comes in a, like a, one of those little cartons, is you shake the hell out of it. <laughs> like before you put in your coffee, you just shake and you shake and you shake, and then it gets all frothy, like it's a latte. It's, yeah, it's like you had a barista froth your milk. It's, it's really pretty cool. fun, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so moving... So that kind of catches up on our diet. I, I think so. Any more questions about... I mean, I guess we can continue. I, I ended... It with the smoothie um, usually we start our days with the smoothie and then throughout the day honestly like it really depends on the type of day we're having like lately these days which I've been trying to do a lot more content um, for the summertime coming up so our days get really busy and so usually for like a lunch or second meal um, we'll do something really quick so most of the time it'll be like an avocado toast like we love using just like I get this really nice organic sourdough bread around here that's local and we'll just make an avocado toast and we top it up with like different oh things. Like Again, nutritional, like, like always like finding ways to make it more nutritious, dense. So like nutritional yeast, sprouted uh, greens, some maybe a slice of tomato. Broccoli like sprouts. That, broccoli sprouts. So. It's, it's funny actually, we talked about this the other day and every time we go to make something is an opportunity to put something good mm -hmm. in your body. So we've managed to look at the different things that we habitually make a lot and you look at them and you're like, okay, if I'm going to have avocado toast, what else can I add to that mm -hmm. to raise the value the to how it will, value. to how mm -hmm. it will impact my general well being or yeah. our, our general sense of like, of feeling great and, and pushing the envelope. So mm -hmm. yeah, something as simple as toast. We've turned into like an eight ingredient <laughs> thing. Yeah. A little bit of sea salt on the avocado, a little yeah. nutritional yeast for the B12. Nutritional yeast is great for B12. For any of you guys that are new to veganism, um, as you know, one of the things that you don't get on a plant-based diet is a B12. So either supplementing it is one way, but also um, eating foods that are fortified with B12s are great. So nutritional yeast is amazing and it tastes like cheese almost. Um, and it's really, really healthy. And also, you know, you can find like different milks, like um, <clears throat> almond milks, oat milks, and a lot of the certain brands, they'll, they'll add a B12 supplement mm -hmm. into it. So you can find it in other It's ways. funny, when I saw the plant-based debate on the Rogan show about B12 supplementation, there's a really great clip where it's, I think it's like a 20 minute clip um, in the debate over B12. And the fact of the matter is you can get your B12 through your meat, which now, um, I guess all of the feed that livestock is getting because B12 is almost non-existent naturally at this point with the, with the quality level of soil. They're supplementing B12 as one of the main supplements into the feed. So they're supplementing the animals. So they're supplementing the animals to make sure there's B12 in them that you eat. Or you can, for like, I think it came down to like 11 cents a pill, you can supplement B12 and get it clean and really absorbable into, into your, your own in, body. Into your so own body. supplement yourself. Yeah. And, it, and it was funny because that, that's a big thing. It's like, well, you have to supplement it. It's like, well, either way in life, you're supplementing. Either the animals are supplementing it because the soil quality is so bad it doesn't have B12 anymore, or you're supplementing yourself. So I'd rather take it directly in and not have to support that kind of industry. Yeah. Um, so anyways, there's a couple other really quick things on food because I think we lingered here a while. Um, I, what would be your quick 15 second way to answer Diana Ortiz Limas? How do you start with clean eating? What's the, what is the number one tip you would give to somebody if they ask you that? Hmm. Start with a cleanse. Do a juice cleanse or do any other cleanses like one of our favorites is called the wild rose cleanse. We do that a few times a year. We do it a few a times a year. It's an herbal cleanse. It comes with a little book that will give you, um, it's very, quite strict in regards to the diet, but it literally takes away all processed food and just tells you, you just got to eat super clean, it's mainly like vegetables and fruits and greens. Um, and you take the supplements every day, like herbs 
to cleanse your body. I find that is one of the most beautiful ways. You can also do the same with a juice cleanse if that's something you're more comfortable well, with. Actually, yeah, a smoker was just saying, I want to try a juice cleanse. What should I expect and how can I start? Mm -hmm. And will any juice do? I would honestly, before you go into a juice cleanse, I would start with like something like a wild rose cleanse, like a detox mm -hmm. cleanse that yeah. you can just buy at a store or order online. You, actually, most health food stores, even like Whole Foods now carry wild rose. I know, I know in Canada they do. I'm sure in the States they do as well or in Europe. Um, but I think that would be a great way to start because what it does, first it'll cleanse your body. The wild rose cleanse is a 12-day cleanse. You'll go through a little bit of a, an experience for sure, but then at the end of it, you're going to feel so good that you, the way you will look at food will slowly begin to change and you won't be as tempted to even eat certain old foods or go back to your old habits that you had because you're now feeling so clean and so lean that you want to continue this sort of path. I, I, um, I, I think that's the best thing you could say to anyone mm -hmm. that asks how to start a clean eating journey. Because when I think back to ours, yeah. it all started with a cleanse. With a cleanse. Because then you were like, wait, why would I want to eat this junk food now? I feel so good. Like it just, it changes the way you look at but food. But after your first cleanse, you fall back into your old habits. And that's actually the best thing that can happen because then you have direct evidence of your experience a week before when you were eating clean and how you felt, mm -hmm. and a week after your cleanse when all the bad habits creep back in and you start eating like you used to eat, and then seeing how you feel. Yeah. And then that becomes, like that's how, literally how our pillar of clean eating began, was starting with, I think it was, oh, it was the, the Joshi cleanse. The jo oh, I started a with a cleanse, yeah. you can look it up, it's a book, it's really easy, it's called the Joshi cleanse. And it was amazing and I started with that and then we did the wild rose cleanse and that's, it just gives you, like, it gives you data. And it also gives you the experience of what it's like to eat more plant foods and over processed. That's always a nice word, plant over processed, right? And I mean the wild rose cleanse, I'm not saying it's a, it's only for vegans, like if you're not a vegan, um, it allows you to eat, you know, meat and things like that too. If that's what you do in your life, then you could still do the cleanse and feel the great benefits. They tell you to avoid red meat and things like that because it clogs up your system. But anyways, um, I'm not saying it's so some people can get very, you know, put off. They don't want to try the vegan thing. Well, Samantha Baumgartner <laughs> um, asked, what about the withdrawal and aggression in your brain from not getting the addictiveness of the junk food? You'll go, through, it's tough. you'll go through a low for sure in the beginning. Like frustration. Be frustration, like you'll feel different emotions arising, but that's where you can come back to your mat and go to your yoga or go into nature, meditate, use other tools to help you get through that stage because that will happen. There is this cleansing that happens from the brain itself. Oh um, yeah, letting go of habits that you're actually addicted to that you're mm -hmm. I said it earlier before but there's a part of your ba brain called the basal ganglia and that is the part of your brain that like when you first like just as an example when you first drove a car um, and you got in and you, you had to drive and put the key in and think about the this and the that and all the things in your brain's just going crazy well now years later when you drive a car and you put the key in and you do stuff you're not even thinking about it and that's your basal ganglia mm -hmm. and that's an amazing thing that's allowed to reduce the stress and stress and pressure naturally in being a human being and just getting into the the general flow of life but what it also has done as a negative aspect on humanity is it's connected itself to terrible things like eating junk food and just like bad habits so all these bad habits also loop into that brain center called the basal ganglia and that's and that's why we have such a difficult time letting go of so much. Exactly. And so when you go through cleanses like that, they really help you just come back to yourself and then think a little bit more before you go back to those old habits. And yeah, and just to finish, you know, the question about how do you just start eating clean, just focus on making sure that most of your fridge is filled with things from the earth so vegetables fruits grains different legumes like all of the things that the earth provides us um, that's meant to work with your body everything that they put through processing facilities and package it and it sits for a long time on shelves like they have to add different additives and and chemicals to make sure that the food lasts right so just that idea alone knowing like okay if i just try to make sure that 80 percent of my food is fresh and maybe that means you have to go to the grocery store a little bit more often than usual but um, that's the first great step and then slowly you know you'll 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 find your way you'll find your path there's many different like books out there cookbooks i mean you can try our detoxify program we have like meals for you there on a daily basis to just give you a seven day kind of 
meal plan to what it would be like to eat a plant-based diet and see the effects of it. Um, so For, just try and experiment and, well, and don't be, don't beat yourself up if you fail, if you have that bag of chips, like it's not the end of the world. It's a journey. And we always remember it's all mm -hmm. about the journey and, and it's long, all about failing and it's all about failing. But as long as your intention is there, like you truly in your heart, you're like, I know I need to do this. I need to do better. Then just keep that in your heart and move forward and be acceptant of every challenge that comes your way and every failure that takes you back and you're going to. Take that next step forward. It was called Jenny. Jenny was asking, "What was that? What was that cleanse called?" And it was called the Wild Rose Cleanse. The Wild Rose Cleanse. Yeah, you guys can look it up. It's actually it was created by um, a doctor. I don't remember his name. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Allison Merrick has asked a hundred times what our sign says. So I'll just <laughs> put this here. Um, you you want to read it? We are, we're all wanderers on this earth, hearts full of wonder, souls deep with dreams. And that actually, I'll put that here. That was a sign we hung on a tree for our wedding on a beach. Yeah. Um, yeah. We had a whole bunch of little signs like that. Actually, yeah. I don't like it there. It looks a little bit too much, so I'm going to just hide it back here. Again. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just it reminds us, it brings energy back to the thought of what it is, but also to the time of when we made it. Yeah. Um, and all our friends made the signs with us, which was really special. Um, what else do we have? What else? So that was, I mean, I think that's about enough about food, food right? Food and diet, yeah. <clears throat> um, last one. What about us living with families who don't want to eat clean? From Laura Burke. Hmm, that is a tough one, I know. <clears throat> how that feels, especially even with, not, we don't live with well, our families, but. In a way, we live in a world with people that live a completely yeah. different way than you and I choose to live on this quest of trying to optimize our life and yeah. our vitality. And it's just about leading by example mm -hmm. and doing your best to find moments to share with them what you're experiencing without being too pushy or preachy and without becoming off like you know everything, but to give them experience that then gives them data that might allow them to see the positive results of it. But the best thing you can do when you want to see change in the world or in your house is be that change. Yeah, lead by example. And, you know, there might be negativity that comes your way. Um, you know, when Mark and I first went vegan, our families didn't understand. And there was definitely like confusion and a little bit of negativity thrown our way. Like, oh, you're killing yourself as people thought. <laughs> They're not the same way anymore. I think there's been a lot more education uh, since then. You know, our parents and our families kind of understand more. My mom's actually like vegetarian now, which was a huge step for her. But uh, <laughs> they were very happy we answered about the thing. <laughs> Sorry, I had to interrupt. You. Um, but just, uh, I know it's tough. I know it's really tough. But you have to just stick your ground and stick your course and know that you're doing this for your own health and you're doing this for your own well being. And if your family um, are interested to know why, share the information. Um, and if they don't understand, well, I mean, they'll come to their own conclusion, but nobody can force you to live a certain way that doesn't feel right for you. You make that choice yourself. Um, and if that means you have some of your food on one side of the fridge and then your family has it somewhere else, well, let that be for now, yeah. you know? Um, it's, it's a tough one. I, I can relate to that for sure, but just, stick your course and know that the changes and the choices that you're making every day are only contributing to raising your own vibration and your own vitality and your own experience and well-being in this life. Mm -hmm. Bunny Blue asks a very popular question we see a lot of time, a lot of, that we see a lot, which is how much time do you spend on workout yoga practice in a day? Mm -hmm. and how much do you think is best for a body to stay healthy and flexible and strong? I would recommend at least an hour if you have the opportunity. I know it's a hard thing to say, yeah. use an hour because I know people are very busy and they have families and work and things like that. But you could answer that like two hours because two would be great. Well, Whatever time you can. Yeah. How about that? Does that make sense? But an hour is optimal. But for us, let's just answer. That's a sweet spot, yeah. Yeah, like for us, usually it's about an hour. And if that means getting up a little bit earlier in the day and making sure that we can fit that hour in, um, that's important especially for me I find for me to be able to combine if I'm doing a workout on the mat 
a little bit of like Pilates, like mm -hmm. very challenging workouts and have time to go deep into my muscles and release and breathe and even have a quick little 10 minute meditation to finish my practice. I need that hour for myself. But you know what? There's been moments when we're traveling where I get 15 minutes and I just do what I can. But if you can just see if you can rearrange your life in any way. And again, maybe that's just training your body to get up a little bit earlier in the mornings. Um, to fit that one hour for you because I truly believe that's going to help you get to that next level and push yourself and push your strength constantly because that's the only way we can improve, right? It's always finding a way and whether that is on the mat or maybe that is on the gym or whether that is on your Pilates workout, like I'm not just talking about yoga here. Um, always finding how can I challenge my body in a different way. It's funny, we were talking about it this morning actually, and I was telling Mark how back when I was uh, an athlete, I was a rhythmic gymnast, one of the things that our coaches used to always do is called cross training. So, you know, you're doing gymnastics, but then twice a week we would have ballet training and we'd be like doing ballet toning exercises, or we would have to go for runs and do like different little lightweight exercises. And that wasn't anything to do with gymnastics but what that did was train our body and build the strength and the stamina that would help us excel in the sport so you have to look at your your physical journey and see that as your own way of being an athlete and whatever capability and version that is to you and look at how can i improve my overall strength stamina and well-being so through yoga through toning through strength training through cardio through maybe hiking a mountain whatever it is just build a little bit of a routine for yourself that you can follow as much as possible to always make sure you're challenging the muscles and the body in various ways and that overall will just improve your overall experience whether that is on the mat or at the gym or on a bike bike path somewhere <laughs> and i'll go back to it because i see a few more things going on about it that's a few more questions but in building this superman sort of itinerary <laughs> yeah. that julianne is saying you should do is understanding baby steps of and course. when you fail yeah. it's okay when you fall off getting oh back on gosh. is the win of course and, and i don't want people to think that this you know you have to become a superman here i mean even if you're having like two pound little weights and you're just doing no but little you also like... name nine things you're like these are the things like but at the same time like even if it's just one thing yeah. and then maybe a month later because you finally got that into your body as a habit you had a second thing. Mm -hmm. That's great. And then maybe you had a third thing. And if you guys are using, let's say, like you're using Boho Beautiful, everything that we do on YouTube or on Patreon, if you're part of it, as part of your routine, you know, try to vary it up. Like we try to give as much as we can. So one day do a Pilates workout, next day do a yoga workout, third day do a yin yoga meditation. You know, always just try to keep things flexible and keep things exciting because you don't want to do the same thing every day mm -hmm. either but you, you also want to do forward. the same thing to a point so it becomes your foundation so there like, i think there's yoga, a, a and that's the thing is there's yeah. always this ebb and flow yeah and i think that's why again we come, we always come back to yoga as our rock yeah and then clean eating has become a rock mm -hmm. and then meditating after yoga has become a rock and slowly we've sort of and supplementation has become a rock yeah huge actually. and so it's now we have like this very strong sort of like base that we build on and experiment little bits in different parts. So now we experiment different types of yoga. We experiment different types of fitness and different supplements. Like in fitness, lately, for the last two months, I've been skipping. Yeah, he's, he actually bought one of those like weighted skipping ropes. Oh yeah, there's these guys on YouTube called the Jump Rope Dudes. Check them out. Yeah. Check them out. Um, I watched a video that proved that skipping is literally the best thing you can do for the most muscles and the most calories burned in your body. And they had this video about it showing it's better than the elliptical, it's better than running, it's better, and it went on and on and, and on. And it's hard. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna try skipping. And I, I started and I couldn't skip for a minute. I was just like, holy yeah. shit, this is crazy. And now I have weighted ropes and two months in, you know, I'm doing 15 minute sessions with like ropes that I couldn't do 10 seconds with before. And it's changed the game. Mm -hmm. And that was just by experimenting with something new. And now I actually think like yoga, it's gonna be a thing that I do for the next 10 years. And it's amazing, like when we tried, you know, eating healthy and eating clean, then you realize, you see it and it's so obvious. And then all of a sudden that becomes a part of what you do. Yeah, like how could I live any other way? Well, it's yeah. amazing too, because yeah. to bring a skipping rope 
on the road is like you can't argue that like Mm -hmm. you can be like oh i fell out of running because i don't have a treadmill or even like i can't bring weights and dumbbells with me everywhere because it's too heavy yeah but a skipping (laughs) rope oh my god you literally throw it in your bag get on a plane get in the car go on a hike go stay at a friend's house whatever it is and then it's like i put on amazing like power music and i just skip and i have fun like i find that i smile (laughs) when i skip a lot um, just because I'm usually listening to like my favorite records and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it's, I don't know. Skipping, I got like, one too, actually. Yeah. And he ordered me I literally, a smaller size because they all by height. So I have like a shorter <laughs> skipping rope. I've done like three minutes, I think the most, but it was hard. I'm like, it's like extreme cardio, you know, it's, it's cool. <laughs> it's so funny. And actually it's, it's funny. Someone said, watch out for stress factors. Uh, and that's, that's crazy because I remember when I was getting better from my back injury, skipping was my goal yeah remember i but bought it, a skipping it is rope actually yeah if you have injury it's a lot of compression mm-hmm. on the spine and on the knees too, yeah so but i do it on my toes yeah. and i do it super light so i'm like i'm not like You're i'm not pounding aware. i think it's another actually interesting thing just to lightly touch about on injuries um no matter what we're doing whatever exercise format we're doing yoga whatever it is that you like to do being mindful and aware of your body is so important especially i mean in yoga for sure you're breathing and you're noticing when certain postures may not feel right or maybe you're feeling any kind of like sharp electric pain in your body remember to always listen to your body like we said earlier your body is very intelligent and if there's something off and if it's causing you more damage your body will tell you and don't push through that pain like there's two different types of pain right there's like the pain of discomfort and like stretchy kind of pain where you just feel the tightness but then there's also the shooting electric pain, like I mentioned, like something stabbing in your knees. That's not something you got to breathe through. That's a sign for you to stop the movement, yeah. stop the posture, get out, go do something else or just take a break for a second. That's really important to always listen to our bodies because, um, yeah. ED, EDT said, Bruce Lee once said that jumping rope for 10 minutes was more effective than running for an hour. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. Um, Lee Lamel asked if I can do some yoga videos and eventually yeah. I think we'll get around to that now that we've kind of accomplished this live stream setup yeah yeah definitely um, we were um, really thinking about that actually for Mark to get on the mat because he does a lot of yoga off the camera so it'll oh, be fun to get him and take some weight off of me <laughs> and then I can just sit back and relax and watch him do yoga <laughs> Sydney <laughs> Thomas has weighted ropes says they're amazing um, there was something earlier that I kept seeing and and because now people are catching on if they keep pasting. I know Allison, you're leading the charge on that, but saying <laughs> keep pasting it and they'll answer it, and it usually is true. I did. You know what I did see actually? I saw a super chat. Somebody said so. I'm gonna scroll up and see if I can find it. Yes, there it is. Uh, oh, it's from Swiss Humanity, and it uh, went a, a while ago. But they say God bless you, beautiful souls. Love you both. Uh, and they sent a super chat which highlights it. And so when that happens, we really yeah. try to pay attention to Love it. Love you too. Um, that's such a sweet message. Yeah. So I'm glad that I remembered that, that I saw that come through. Okay. I so think that we touched upon um, some of our main... I mean, there's the last few tools that we use personally that have been helping us, obviously, meditation and nature. Like Mark mentioned previously, um, we try to end our personal yoga practice with at least a 10 minute meditation. If time allows, we go a little bit deeper. Oh my goodness. Um, and finding time in nature, because of this guy right here, he gives us the gift to be able to go, go out to nature twice a day. Um, we're right now- Forces on, the gift. Forces, yeah. Uh, we're on Vancouver Island right now, so there is so much just forest and, and ocean around here. And it's it's been really wonderful to even no matter what day we're having, no matter how busy we are, we have to go for at least a 45 minute walk and breathe and reconnect. So that's been definitely helping us, even with just managing stress and anxiety and uncertainty. I, you know, we as many people have definitely felt those feelings in the last six months based on what's going on in the world. Um, and just being able to go out to nature and breathe has been a huge help in just helping us find uh, a mental balance in the midst of chaos. Well, and that's, and again, it goes back to what you said at the yeah. start, being balanced. And that goes into a question that Somos Om has been asking a lot. How do you deal with mental balance when it comes to social media? Growth, the channel, was one of the main components at the beginning of Boa Beautiful, with a question mark. Notice my voice went up. 
uh, which was the main challenge. And I think what's interesting about that is talking about the balance of social media. First, the balance of Boho Beautiful and everything we're talking about here, which is that all these components that we share on Boho Beautiful were not just a yoga channel like other yogis do on... on yeah, most, pe most yoga channels that you see on YouTube and that we've seen, it's just yoga. And but to, to uh, us, it it's felt it, more. It's, we wanted to yeah. express our journey and that's why a, a podcast like this achieving the best mental and physical shape of your life. That's kind of what the archive of Bow Beautiful was. And we realized like when we started, the intention was let's make videos and maybe we can get away from our lives that we were at. And it was kind of like a tool for escape. Um, and that was a very shallow short-term goal that we okay. didn't realize so much more was gonna oh come from. Just like if you set a fitness yeah. goal, like, oh, I wanna lose 10 pounds. You think that that's why well, you're doing like something. Well, like the way we started, the very first time we started doing videos, where we were as people and on our journey has transformed in such a great way since the beginning of time of Boho Beautiful on YouTube that um, it's pretty crazy when but, you say that. Like when we started, we're like, oh, we just maybe we could maybe we could do it. What these people do, you know, they do yoga videos, they do fitness videos. Well, we do it. I mean, I was teaching fitness and yoga for years before we even started the channel. So like, well, why not do it online? Um, and that was kind of the motivation to do it, but also just to see like, well, if others can, why can't we? And that was a, that's a huge thing about everything. If yeah. others can get healthy, why can't I? If, if others yeah. can do this online, why can't we? And it's always the challenge of seeing something work in a different context and, and then believing you can do it yourself. But what I was getting at was the idea that we had this goal, which was very short-sighted, and very just like, it was a, sh I, I don't like the word shallow, but I think it was because it was like, we just wanted out of Toronto and we wanted a new life. Mm -hmm. But we didn't realize that to get that new life and to get out of Toronto, we had to embrace so much more. And by taking that first step, it opened a door that showed us that, no, you have to, you have to find your truth and you have to then share all of it. And so for us, rather than, I think if we'd just done yoga videos and that's it, I don't think we'd be where we are as people or as a channel. So the biggest challenge to answer the question, I think was embracing the idea that just to let it all out and to say, okay, we're gonna do fitness videos. We're gonna do diaries. We're gonna do meditations because there all- There were things, a couple things like that that probably did hurt our growth. Of course. Like the- But we wouldn't be where we, we are. But we wouldn't be, exactly as, like- As, as us, yeah. exposing that and side that's, of us. And that's a trade we're willing to take, you know, even though like, cause you know, when we post like certain diaries where we share a personal take on life and our experiences, some people, I mean, obviously we've had comments being like, just do yoga. Like, oh, why are so you much doing, like people get really angry because maybe get they don't, yeah, we do. Because they don't agree with our view of the world or the way we wanted to showcase our experiences, which is fine. Like everyone has their own own experiences. We just put, put that out on camera. Um, so we definitely saw like people would leave our channel based on the fact that they were angry <laughs> that we would post boho diaries. Um, but it's okay because... Or an opinion. What, anytime we seem to have an opinion. Yeah, anytime we seem to have an opinion. But what was really beautiful is there are so many other people that we found deeply more connected to, you know, that came to us not just because, you know, they enjoyed the yoga, but maybe because they found something that resonated within their own hearts from us as human beings. Because, you know, in these online platforms, sometimes you see people and they're just like, walking, talking teachers, you know, and it's, it's great. They're mm -hmm. giving a service, but I don't know, to us, this we was wanted about, to share our hearts. Yeah, this was about something more, more because yeah. we knew that there was a journey for us yeah. to go on, not the channel, not just to leave Toronto, but for ourselves, because the more we allowed ourselves to be vulnerable, the more we grew. And the more we experimented with new things and saw value from it, the more we wanted to share that with the world. So that's why it became like, just an archive of the things that work for us yeah. and and that was the challenge it's hard to put yourself out there and I it's know. hard to like see people mad at you because you have opinions about the food you eat or you know the government you're, that you're under yeah. or the you know the state of the world or the environment or, or climate or change if you're or saving animals or showing them you know suffering of stray animals they get really angry at that because some people just want it to see yoga and fitness videos and respect that but that's not who we are, you know, we feel like 
if we have a platform and we've been so blessed to have it grow to a specific size that it's now like well we feel like it's our responsibility to speak a little bit more um, and share our views and share our point of how we see the world and maybe that'll inspire others and help others along their journey because it's not yoga isn't just about going on the mat and doing poses it's about living that life right and that goes off the mat and it's living through compassion and kindness to yourself most first and foremost but then taking that energy and bringing it out into the world and sharing it with other human beings with other animals with our earth like all of these components allow us to live our most authentic selves and our best mental and physical shape yeah which is the title which again like that's there's doors that open every time you challenge yourself it's about growth and how many of those doors will reveal and do you have the courage to walk through and yoga was the first door and putting stuff online for us was another door but then as yoga connected the mind body union everything started to open up and we started being brave enough to challenge the things we do and i think that's about everything in life we constantly are adding new things we're constantly like i said i just started skipping the other day or mm -hmm. we just started with like and like i don't know what did I, I ordered like freeze-dried broccoli seeds last night <laughs> or bro broccoli powder to put into my smoothies because it's like i want more sulforaphane in my life um so you know and you're and, and i'm gonna put that in my smoothie and i'm gonna see if i feel anything and see if it affects me any differently and i'm also gonna know that it's a positive step and I think that's another thing is that each positive step you make, the next positive step gets a little easier. Mm -hmm. So the more you can keep finding whatever it takes to try new things and have the curiosity and investigate what the results are, the more power, I love seeing you like lean in. I'm like, what? Sorry. The I'm more, no, it's saying. fine, of course. The more, um, I don't know, the more it becomes easier to, to, to walk that journey and to find the bounty of the quest. Yeah. Um, so I saw a quick comment. Someone asked, how is your app doing? That's a good question. We're working on it, guys. Um, it's really close. We're super excited. Um, we're hoping, I don't know, I don't want to give a date yet. I feel nervous it to give a date. Getting, it keeps getting, because it's so many videos to we're put at, in there. We're putting every single video that you guys see on YouTube onto this app. So you're going to have like commercial free, sortable, filtered, mm -hmm. full catalog of Boho Beautiful. But you know, it seemed like a pretty easy idea when you think about it, but it's actually has been taking us a lot well, longer. Well, every video is a couple hours to re-export. It's like, yeah, as we're having to really dive through like hundreds and hundreds of videos, which will pay off in the end when yeah. you guys are able to finally look in and be in it and be like, wow, I can sort all of this because YouTube doesn't allow you to sort anything. Um, but it's just taking a little bit of time. But hopefully August, yeah. let's say August, I think Late, July will be July, like our August. setup time to actually get everything in categories and things like that. And hopefully August will be the time when you guys will have access to it and be able to enjoy it. And we're really excited because, I don't know, it'll be a fun platform for us to be able to connect even deeper as a community. And for mm -hmm. those of you guys that are here on YouTube with us, I feel like it's turning into this such a beautiful community. Yeah, and recognizing people, people and we're forming know, relationships. It's really, really and amazing. Like, and so to be able to even have like our own little space like that would be so awesome. And, and I'm really excited for and it. And we're really grateful for your um, excitement towards it. Yeah. Because um, right now, I mean, the pa Patreon's coming along great. And ever since yeah. we opened it up to pay what you can and we've been doing all these live streams, um, that community has really come alive. So yeah. I guess it's just our hope that we can transfer that over community into the app, which into is the app. Be so much more user friendly and, and has all this just, cool, fun stuff. Yeah. It, so. But yeah, thank you guys as well. If you're patrons, um, yeah. because it has been great. We did another class yesterday. We did, yeah, yoga workout class. It's been, I don't know. It's really cool having the studio and being able to like connect like this yeah. in so many other ways. And we're, we're planning to, um, because it's summer now and we might do a little bit of road tripping because obviously you can't travel too far, but the studio might be here for a little bit and then we might be somewhere else, mm -hmm. maybe Mark's cottage, we're thinking. Yeah. But, um, but we'll be keeping it going throughout the summer one way or another, even though maybe not be a full studio setup at some times, but we'll still have live streams and ways to connect together. Cassandra Land asked a few times. Okay. Uh, it's a question about yoga. Okay. Do you sometimes get bored? Like you feel you don't know what to do because you've experienced it all in yoga. 
And are there days where you don't want to do yoga? It's a really interesting question because I think the, the, the emotional EQ of the body always leaves space for disinterest and boredom in everything you do. Mm -hmm. And I think it's kind of been a challenge. It's also the challenge when you feel that to see if you can break through it. Because mm -hmm. in the end, you know your yoga challenge, your yoga practice is going to be very beneficial. And once you get past that wall, yeah. um, you can beat the boredom. Because yeah, of course, so the answer is yes, but I think- Yeah, there's been moments for sure, even especially in those times when we felt like burnt out, where I've even had moments where I get up, I'm like, I don't feel like getting on the mat today. I just don't even feel like moving my body right now. And that's normal as well. And again, having that awareness and recognition that that's how you feel and repurposing that energy into a different format. Maybe that's even just like, I'm gonna go for a long walk outside and breathe in nature. And maybe that's what you need in that moment. And there's nothing to be guilty about or nothing to feel bad about because you didn't do yoga that day. It's, it's always about listening to what feels best for you. Um, but in terms of boredom, I mean, I think it's just important, like we said, to keep it fresh, right? Like if you do the same type of yoga, the same practice every day, you will get bored because your muscles will get strong in this particular way and things are going to feel really easy and you're not challenging yourself. So always switching it up and whether that is trying a different style of yoga or maybe, you know, like I said, like try a different style of working out, go do like a crazy cardio class somewhere, you know, just, just do funny, funny, fun things to keep it exciting. Or change up the music, change, change up the music soundtrack. Music is actually huge. Music sometimes gives the inspiration mm -hmm. for us to move. Like I personally connect to a lot of like more spiritual music, um, even sometimes lectures that combine it with songs like chill steps, we call them, they have them on YouTube putting something like that, which kind of gets the brain involved in mm -hmm. the theory and the topic and you're moving and then you feel like you lose yourself in it. Um, so the, the outside um, external sounds actually help a lot. So if you're doing yoga in silence, I can understand it could be a little bit dull at times. So put on some music, you know, put whatever you want. It doesn't, there's no rules. Like there isn't, you know, you're not going to be shamed for doing anything. Do what's right for you. Kayla Cruz. Mm -hmm. Isn't the sacred life kombucha the best? <laughs> <laughs> we I should just start saying this video is sponsored, but even though it's not. not. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, every, every, every podcast, you're drinking the same blue kombucha. It's amazing. Maybe the, the company will see you and just send us some a box of it for you. <laughs> I don't mind paying for it. It's so good. Because we're always promoting uh, it. So out of all the kombuchas, <laughs> though, you can never trust a kombucha to be good right, if it's right. pre-made and not coming out of the tap. Yeah. And so it's the only one that like, I think also I found out they use coconut water in it. I was reading the ingredients, yeah. which is probably why there's a little bit more sweetness, but um, I'm big into kombucha. I would almost say I'm a connoisseur at this point, and I love a lot of them, but this one by far is just like, it's the win. So Kayla, I'm with you, <laughs> 100%. Um, so let's just talk about supplements because we haven't, and we've mentioned it a few times. Okay. And because I think supplements are part of that high vibration for how we live, like seeking the higher energy. Yeah. And I think since we've tried so many different ones, maybe um, we can give some recommendations, but maybe people can talk about what they recommend too. Yeah, if there's anything that you guys like to use in your daily life that you've, you feel has helped you get to that next level or just give you that vitality and energy in your daily basis, like throw it in the comments. We'd love, we'd love to learn about new products out there for sure. So what is our favorite supplements that we love to put in our smoothies or to or take, just as, take or just to take? Yeah. I mean, B12 is like a crucial. Yeah, we take B12, just little pills supplements for sure. Uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick turned us on during uh, the coronavirus era to vitamin D. Mm -hmm. We never really supplemented vitamin D and then we found a lot of data in that it helps with things like fighting or raising your immune system for- Helps fight the coronavirus. Yeah, yeah. it like directly as yeah. tributes. There's a lot of studies that are coming out. There's a great uh, Rhonda Patrick on Rogan where she talks just about vitamin D. You guys should check it out actually. It's really insightful and she's got so much data to share, scientific mm -hmm. data to share about the benefits of vitamin D. But we bought um, these little, like a little tiny guy, a dro like a droplets, it's liquid. And you can either take four drops 
because one drop is like a thousand um i use i use i use yeah i use and, and four thousand is a good amount to take yeah so you can take four drops on your tongue or a lot of times i'll just take four in drops into my smoothie and blend it um, and so we also just recently, um, I, I usually take it in liquid form before, but we started putting DHA into uh, DHA our smoothies. DHA flax. Yeah, yeah. from flaxseed. Also another liquid, which is really great for your brain. Yeah, mm -hmm. so DHA in liquid form is amazing. Um, Sulforaphane, that I mean definitely has been a supplement. We talk a lot about that. And I saw someone commenting about that earlier, saying that they got turned on to um, Broca Fusion. Oh. Because of we put Brock Fusion in. It's a brand actually out of Calgary that we started um, using, and then literally talked about it. We didn't even like have any conversations with them, and mm -hmm. then um, promoted them based on the fact that we loved it, and then got connected with the brand and the owner, and then they started giving us even more supplements, um, which is all derived from broccoli seeds. And, and sulforaphane mm -hmm. is an amazing molecule that comes out of coniferous uh, vegetables. I think I said that right, and. Um, Actually, if you're cooking broccoli, if you put mustard seed, it raises the sulforaphane. Mm -hmm. um, but it basically, it's, it's sort of a, a healing molecule and a heightening molecule. And if you eat enough of it, you don't even have to drink coffee because it gives you an actual physical like lift. energy lift. Yeah. But it also repairs cells. And that's really interesting if you get into it because um, there's a lot of studies that this company, Nuco, We'll put a link to them because we do have a link that's like a sponsored link that if you buy anything, I think you get a discount or at least we get a credit for it or something like that. And then they keep sending us stuff. So that would be great. Um, but we'll put it in the video when this is done. And they have studies at Nuco about their Broca Fusion and their creams and stuff where the healing properties of sulforaphane in their studies that they've done with just people in their community is massive. They actually have also as ointment, so it's not just uh, a pill format. You can use it as a lotion or ointment. And I started using their ointments actually in Costa Rica back in a couple years ago when we were living there. Um, anytime I would get a sunburn at night, I would put the ointment on my face and literally the next day I'd wake up and my skin would be fine. Like it wouldn't be red. Oh. And it was like, remember we were like, it's a miracle cream. And Sunburns so disappear at night. It was One crazy. Night. And, and, or any other sort of skin conditions that you have. So I had some friends that had like eczema or anything else that I always kind of promote this brand to them. I know we tell everyone about unintentionally, it. Unintentionally, but like it just worked for us. So. Remember when my dad had a black eye? Yeah. Like my dad fell in the ice and got a black eye and then came with a black eye to Costa Rica to visit us. We we're like, we're what the hell happened to you? <laughs> and anyways, we gave him the cream and it Clear. It's just a couple days and it cleared up. So, so it's we're big really proponents powerful. of sulforaphane for yeah. sure. And it's natural. It's a natural product and it's, it's healthy. For so you. check out, yeah. I don't know, Nuco. There, but there's a lot of phony ones. Um, I also take Brockamax sometimes and I forget the third brand. But you have to be really careful because it needs two different precursors. Um, Glucoraphanin and something else I can't remember right now because we're doing a live thing and my brain never works properly. Um, but they interact together to create the sulforaphane. So it's not actually in the molecule. It's a molecule that's created when the interaction happens, when the seed breaks or the mustard seed comes in or whatever it might be. And when you freeze broccoli sprouts, actually it raises yeah. the... Uh, actually, that's another thing we do. Buy some broccoli sprouts at the grocery store, put it into your freezer, and then you could just take it and put a little scoop into your smoothies. Or, or just sprout them yourself. You can just order a sprouting yeah. kit online, totally. which we've had for six months and we haven't started because we're far too distracted. Too busy. But, oh, that's so funny. Um, so what else do we use? I mean, I'm trying to wrap my head around. I mean, there's like the natural stuff we throw into our smoothies that aren't necessarily in bottle form. It's like hemp hearts and cacao powders, chia seeds, flax seeds. Mm -hmm. Fatso um, peanut butter. <laughs> you love fatso peanut butter. It's like a peanut butter infused with like avocado oils. And, and all kinds of oils and chia mm -hmm. seeds and stuff. Yeah. Um, um, what else? What else, what else is there? So, oh, well, Mark, I, I dabbled in a little bit, but Mark, you've been a little bit more regiment with um, resveratrol and with Oh, Anamens. Anamens. Yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Anamens is a really interesting supplement um, that's relatively new in the anti-aging and molecular rebuilding side mm -hmm. of things, kind of like the sulforaphane thing, but I use a brand called Alive by Nature. Mm -hmm. I did it a lot last year and then stopped when we went to Tibet because I didn't want to bring them with me. Um, and I started again recently, just again, I like to try things out again and see if it hits. And last mm -hmm. time I was using Anamens, um, it was amazing. And it really, it basically takes your NAD level 
um, which is basically your energy as a human being. And as you age, every year it drops a little bit. And by the time you're in your mm-hmm. 30s or your 40s, you know, you're at like 30 or 40% lower than you are. And by the time you're even older, it drops and drops and drops. And that's what gives you that lethargy and that lack of energy. But NMNs is supposedly, and there's only studies done by the companies there's that sell them. There's only two companies so far. Well, there's a few. No, no, there's quite a few now. Okay. When we first started, there's only two. Okay. But it, um, it helps raise your NAD level. And there's also NADs that you can actually just take for supplementing NADs. But NMNs are supposedly um, the supplement that, that mm. helps actually raise it. Um, but the resveratrol is the thing that gives it the gas to do the, to do the work. And you could buy those and just pill format at any health food store. And resveratrol mm-hmm. comes from grape seed. Yeah. Um, and that just on its own, it also comes in red wine. And well, that's what they always say, right? Like if you yeah. drink a lot of red wine, it's like how good for anti-aging. But really what they're talking about is the resveratrol inside the wine. But you can take resveratrol in purest format, which would be like... Like quadruple the amount that you would oh, get. Oh, to get, yeah. I think they say to get enough resveratrol from red wine, you'd have to drink a case a day. Oh my God. So it's just That's insane that as soon as resveratrol came out, that the wine industry just used it to like drive yeah. the anti-aging <laughs> message of wine through the roof. But it was so, so out of place um, that it's almost, la- it is laughable. Um, and then, so that actually discredited resveratrol for a while because when it came out that they were falsifying the information, um, it didn't really talk about the fact that you could supplement with it. And again, it's like a rebuilding molecule yeah. and it, it helps sort of, it helps heal. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of stories online about resveratrol doing a lot yeah, of wonderful things. You guys things. can uh, check it out, do some of your own research if you're interested and if there's something you want to learn a little bit more about it. We did some research and it seemed like it made a lot of sense. And so that's what we started implementing it into our life. Um, the last thing that we do, we've been taking quite regularly on a daily basis actually, and again, it's called BioK, uh, the brand, and it's a probiotic, but yeah, they come in these... Tara was just asking Yeah, about they that. come in these little little bottles, and um, they taste, if you buy the, you can buy like different, there's like fermented rice, there's fermented soy, there, or oats. Um, the one we're using right now is the fermented soy, and it's in mango flavor. And don't get the rice. Don't get the rice. The it rice ones terrible. are terrible. Horrible. <laughs> but the soy ones are actually really tasty, and they taste like those drinkable yogurts. I don't know if you guys remember, like, I don't know, I remember when I was a kid, they had these, like, drinkable yog- yogurts called Yop or Yop. 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 <laughs> Papa Yop. <laughs> Yop, right? And you just, like, drink them. And these little probiotics taste exactly the same. So it's almost like a treat. I like enjoy it taking every day and it's filled with like billions and billions of active cultures and it's, it's really good. And, so. and we started on them because they offer, they have a lot of non-vegan ones, but their vegan ones are great. The vegan ones are great. Yeah. So it's a great uh, probiotic to take on a daily basis. Um, mm-hmm. Olivia L, what are some plant-based foods with iron? Uh, broccoli. I eat so much broccoli. Yeah. It's got and like Mark was it. saying, if you guys cook broccoli, add a little bit of mustard seed into it and it'll raise the sulfur level of it and it doesn't really add too much of a taste but it adds more of a nutritional component to There's, it. and caroline's asked a couple of times carolyn andrade i think andrade yeah uh, do you think liquid supplements are better than pills you know, there's so much data on all sides about the bioavailability of supplements, whether eaten or um, in liquid Drink, form, yeah. or uh, the NMN pills are actually the dissolve under your tongue kind of things. I think those actually have been proven anything that you're letting sit, like I think CBD oil, a lot of CBD is that right. way, like you put it in your mouth and you sit, that's a way to get it directly into your bloodstream. But I think from person to person it might change because all the studies are just, they it's vary. Hard to say, yeah. So I don't know, I mean, we're not, we're again, not scientists, like we can't. We just try stuff yeah. and yeah. if it has a positive effect, we keep doing it. Yeah. And then sometimes we forget to take them for a while and then we come back to it, we're like, oh, hey, we haven't, Taking this we haven't bought resveratrol in four months. We should get back on that or, yeah. you know, so it's like, mm-hmm. it really is just like adding things in and just seeing about the effect. And I think also the placebo of, the action of doing something positive and putting something positive in your body mm-hmm. helps just raise your vibration, your yeah. general day-to-day consciousness and awareness. And lastly, what I'll add is some of the things we we don't take it every day, but sublingual. That's right, Allison. It's good. Sorry, sublingual. When you put it under your tongue. Um, is we love to also take just in pill format. There's spirulina, corella. You can get the it greens. in powders. Yeah, just the greens. Sometimes you can add the greens to your smoothie, but if you overdo it, it'll make the smoothie taste a little fishy. So I prefer to do it in pill format. So just taking a, like a spirulina, corella, and even a turmeric pill is great. And that's just a general upkeep of 
your own well-being. It's there's got a lot of really really good stuff in it. So yeah, yeah. I think I mean we could go on for supplements forever. <laughs> that's like some main ones, but I mean we've tried lots we, of stuff. We go, we would try a lot. We experiment. I think that's just a great message to to leave the supplement discussion with. It's experiment with it. Do your own research ask questions you know there's so much that's out there and there's so much for all of us to learn from one another and when you experiment with it just see how it reacts with your body right because each of our bodies mm -hmm. is different and what may work amazingly for us maybe won't work for you or vice versa everyone's right? so, body is different yeah. that's exactly it laura has a great recommendation mitch the vegan and dr gregor for plant-based yes. nutrition so if you're looking into plant-based nutrition or just supplement nutrition in general not even it's always plant-based, but a lot of his information is really, really valuable. Dr. Greger is probably Amazing. my number one go-to. He actually um, just recently put out a book, because um, he did the book, How Not to Die. But there's another one that he created based on the whole coronavirus, you know, viral infections kind of topic. And it's, uh, I haven't read it myself, but I just saw that it just recently came out. So I'm excited to check it out. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. If, if you're interested in it, check it out. But he's amazing. He's he's got a lot of like interviews too. He's been on a few podcasts, but he is, Dr. Gary is so weird. he's awesome. Yeah. Um, so much knowledge. This is just a quick one. Uh, Joanna has asked a few times that she watched the documentary The True Cost and Stink, um, oh. which we mentioned in a podcast before, but was wondering how we source our clothes, particularly yoga, yoga leggings, and it's painful to find them. I, I know. to find anything that's these days um, made with a proper true cost. Well, we we honestly these days also I we avoid any sort of cheap clothing. We like do if, our best to we avoid. We do avoid. Like if you're going to go and you see a, a pair of leggings at H&M for $15, well, you got to ask how much did they pay whoever made these, right? Probably like 50 cents or something and you know that you're contributing more to a fast fashion. And that's been a huge struggle for us because especially honestly guys with like a lot of content we're shooting, there's always you know, we try our best to keep the outfits varying so the classes don't look the same um, online. And it's been a bit of a struggle. Like we've been doing a lot of searching and because we're not traveling, like used, usually when we travel, we'll go to a lot of like local markets or any sort of little boutique stores that are local in those communities and see what they have and just buy to support the and, local communities. And lately we've been just Googling um, just, for, for yoga pants, even though I don't wear them, I've been helping Juliana yeah. Sorsen by just searching recycled plastic bottle pants. Yeah. Um, her favorite brand, Tiki, went out of business. Yeah, they went bankrupt. But if you can find but, Tiki yeah. pants, um, they are made Yoga out of... Yoga Outlet um, is an online store, but they only ship to America. So Canadians, like us, it sucks. We can't get their pants. But I've had some American friends. I ordered it to their house and they ship it to me. Um, but it's like a huge online store of different brands and they actually used to carry tiki clothing on their website um, tiki yeah. i think it's spelled t-i-t-e-e-k-i uh, -E -E um, so if you go on there and you can just kind of go through all their brands like they have other ones that are quite um eco-friendly but just google them do the research yeah. Every, that's the problem i think with everything these days is everything's available and everyone can make anything and everyone can sell it online so you actually, it causes, it puts the onus on us as a consumer to do the research about every product we're yeah. going to buy. I saw a question about, from Daniela Cruz asking, do you think an all-in-one supplement capsule for vegans would be good? Would you buy it? Um, and I wouldn't buy it unless I did this strict research because in the supplement industry, it's just as nasty as the clothing industry. They're able to lie. They're able to say it's a great pill, but until once you look under the hood and you see what it is, it's probably better to or buy a lot of, of those things individually. Even, like, source things from certain um, factories that could potentially lie to you. Like I mean, we were dabbling a little bit in the supplement thing, and it's definitely a project for us in the future. We want to create protein powders and supplements that we love ourselves to be able to give to our communities. But when we started doing the research and looking into oh, what it would insane. be even like to create this, so much is sourced through China and so much has so many question marks that were like, whoa. Where did it come from? What's the actual level of organics of it? Yeah. Uh, what are the factory or what are the workers treated like who grow it and who supply it? So the supply chain itself, like there's a lot of things that once you look under the hood on a lot of this stuff, it's sketchy as hell. Like mm -hmm. it's just like it's yeah. so again, like whether it's clothing or supplements or whatever, you just have to really do your homework 
and spend the extra time rather than just buying something, finding out if it is aligned with your values. Mm -hmm. And if it is, then support it because every dollar you spend in life is a vote towards whatever you're paying for, especially in this day and age when you can just choose to buy sulforaphane, let's just pick or resveratrol, and there's nine options. Mm -hmm. So how do you choose? Well, you'd, other than how it makes you feel, also, how does it make you feel for supporting that company? Yeah, and what are their values and what are their ethics? Just doing a little bit of that research. It takes a lot more time, but then you know at least that your dollars are going to support the right uh, company that are supporting the right ethics and methods. Um, That's but, great. Yeah. Sweetflower uses thrift shops, boutiques, yeah. and rebuys, use things. She also sews. I mean, that's amazing. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I think we're kind of wrapping up here, hey? It feels like yeah. our energy level's getting into like a soft kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> and that's when we kind of always know that like, okay, I think we're, we're spent, right? Yeah. I don't know. I think that covers a lot of the pillars. Um, something that we do. I'm sure there's so much more that and we're that's all, out there. And we're, we're always changing. We're always changing. We're always learning. We're always evolving. If, that if, is the process of what we do. If you set out on the journey mm -hmm. and you seek growth for yourself, it is an endless, infinite yeah. path that will bring you so many challenges, but also so many benefits. And I think it's important that you commit to it and you commit to the curiosity of what am I capable of? What can I accomplish if I put my mind to it? And how good can I feel? And how healthy can I get? And how much balance and stability is out there? And, and how much abundance um, can be accomplished? And, and if you really focus on those questions, focus on that body and mind alignment and focus and, on yourself. and focus on yourself yeah. and give yourself these gifts, then all of a sudden you realize that you start trying to give those gifts back to the people in your life yeah. and to, and go ahead. Also, no, I'm just going to say you also realize that you're strong enough and powerful enough to create these changes. Don't get discouraged when you look up at the mountain and you see, oh my gosh, I have this far to go. Well, just focus on the little baby steps in front of you. Don't focus on, you know, in two years you want to be like this or do this or eat like this or live this type of lifestyle. Just choose little tiny goals and little tiny steps of what can you do today? What can you do this week? What can you do this month exactly. to help you just evolve yourself a little further, get yourself feeling a little bit more energized, um, eating better, feeling better, moving a little bit more, doing more yoga, you know, all these little things that's what creates this journey for you and the journey is the most important thing it's not about reaching some kind of like we said in the beginning like an ultimate goal of i'm my best shape now it's like no because when you get to that best shape you can go further you can always go further, you can always right? go further. so the journey is the beautiful magical experience that we go through and it's a learning experience and that's what we're here that's what we're here on earth as human beings we're here to learn we're here to expand ourselves to find ourselves to live and find our purpose in life and give and share and connect with other fellow human beings yeah mm -hmm. like we're all doing here today yeah. so guys if you like this podcast give it a thumbs up under the video there um if you want to see other podcasts someone was asking what the other ones are going to be about from here on we don't know we kind of just we just make it up a few days before but <laughs> go into that not the comments that you're all talking in right now but go to the bottom the comments yeah. on this video if you can now or once it's actually posted and processed and let us know what you'd like us to talk about yeah that would be great we just um we love doing these because i think it raises a nice conversation for all of us to connect together and 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 think about different ideas and topics and we would love to know what feels like what what do you want to hear because i mean we can go anywhere really we can go to any topic mm -hmm. no, that's exactly <laughs> um, if you want to hear more personal things about us if you want to hear something a little more general you know let us know because we're here and um, we may not always be streamed for this room but uh but we'll try to keep doing this we're yeah. trying to do it weekly I don't know, kind but at the same time, we don't want to set anything that we may not be able to do once we start traveling. But who knows, right? Yeah. So, yeah, give us a thumbs up if you like it. And Leave a comment guys. in the bottom. Yeah. And thank honestly, you. thank you. Yeah. Thank you started you this with here. gratitude, right? <laughs> yeah. And we're ending with gratitude. Yeah, no, thank you. It's, it's just really cool. I'm just watching all your comments and sweet emojis and, and love and uh, appreciate it a lot. And, and just, yeah, thank Gratitude has been a huge 
energy that we've been feeling today just because it's really beautiful to be able to sit on a mat like this with a computer and, and talk about ideas and hear your guys' thoughts and questions. It's, it's really cool. I love it. I love it too. All right. Well, I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day or evening, wherever you are. Oh, Mr. Grumps here is wishing you a beautiful day. As well. like, <laughs> he had a long walk this morning, so he's just tired. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. Sending you all our love. And um, we got some yoga coming your way in a few days. We actually got a live stream happening tomorrow on Amazon. We should do it on this couch um, next time. Yeah, we should. <laughs> uh, we'll be doing a quick little... I'll post a link on our Instagram account if you guys follow us where you can do a yoga workout for 20 minutes tomorrow with me there. This is the longest intro exit ever. I'm just kind of updating everybody. But Well, no, it's good because I have to go over there and click in the stream. So I'm just leaving you talking here. <laughs> All right. Let's send you guys so much love. Mwah. Gracie, say bye. <laughs> Mr. Grumps. Man, can you believe he's growling like that? <laughs> like, <"Arr."> Bye, guys. <laughs>